From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of African Thanksgiving. It was late fall, and the heat hung like a stifling blanket over the jungle, where it bordered the native city of El Reden. Even the recently cut branches that covered the pitfalls were dry and lifeless. There were many of these traps designed to protect the city against marauding beasts. A huge lion lay on the bottom of one of the pits, gasping for breath in the arid heat of noon. For a moment, the lion seemed confused as the slender figure of a white girl came hurtling down into the pit. Then he crouched low, snarling. He was about to spring when a bronze savage leaped into the pitfall and came slowly toward him, a gleaming shaft of steel in his powerful hands. Grasp that root over there and scramble up the side. Merci, monsieur. Start back to the city. Hurry. I will do as you say, monsieur. I should not have run away in the first place. I stand no chance of escaping. Well, I better scramble out of here myself. Yeah. The girl's out of sight already. She really must have run as fast as she... I wonder what she meant by standing no chance of escaping. I think I'll go back to the public inn at El Reden and find out. Usually the inn at El Reden was either completely deserted or almost so. But now the walled courtyard was crowded. A dozen Arab horses were tethered there. A cortege of slaves stood about, and an enormous Senegalese guard stood sentry at the inn's entrance. His fierce eyes gleamed from beneath a scarlet fez, and he raised a huge broadsword as Tarzan attempted to enter. Not go past this door. The sign proclaims this to be a public inn, and I desire to enter. I'm looking for a girl who just ran from the jungle. Is no girl here. Inn is closed to others. During stay of Sheikh Hassanin Mohammed Hazara, my master. Room for no one else. I believe the girl is here, and I intend to talk to the owner of the inn. What is the cause for the disturbance, Muki? Jungle man, say he talked to you. I tell ah, him... Ah, it is Tarzan. May I be of service, jungle lord? I seek a young French girl. French girl? There is no French girl here. Well... I, I should like to meet Sheikh Hazara and see what he has to say about her presence. Perhaps you have been paid for your silence. I will confer with him, but you shall have to remain here. And I must lock the door against the possibility of your intrusion. You are both fools. Had you invited this Tarzan to enter, I could have easily explained away the matter of the girl. But now you increased his curiosity. You make matters most difficult. We only did what you ordered. You said no one else was to be admitted. Unless and... I satisfy the curiosity of this jungle man, he may bring the police here. I cannot afford questions until I have reached my own land with the lovely French mademoiselle. If there's nothing further you wish of me. But there is, innkeeper. I desire you to prepare the most lavish meal of which you are capable and to bring forth the best wines your cellars afford. But, of course, mighty sheik. I hasten to carry Just a the... moment. Yes, mighty sheik? Give me the key to the front door. Of course. Here. I hasten to do your bidding. What you do, master? I shall throw the door open wide for the lord of the jungle. I shall invite him inside, and I shall honor him with food and drink. And whereas you two stumbling fools have only piqued his curiosity, I shall lay it to rest. No man shall deprive me of the beauty of the French girl. She shall be mine for all time. You want Muki car guards? Watch Tarzan if he try make move against mighty sheep? I am more concerned with the actions of the girl. Go upstairs and tie her up. 
both her slender wrists and her tiny feet. Also, place a gag in her mouth and leave the whip where I can reach it easily should it be necessary to prove to her once again that I am the master. I do, as you say. Good. With a gag in her mouth, she cannot cry out. And I am quite confident that I can outwit this jungle man. We'll return to our story of Tarzan in just a moment. The last time Tarzan had been to the inn, it had been a crude affair. But for Sheik Hazara's visit, it had been hung with silken drapes and lavish brocades. Indeed, it seemed like an oriental palace, and the innkeeper and his assistants were scurrying about, preparing a lavish meal for the desert potentate and his most honored guest. But I insist you remain with me. It is not pleasant to dine alone. I shall accept with thanks. I desire to discuss one of the members of your entourage... But who among my followers has deserved the notice of such a noble one as you? The young French girl who ran into the jungle and then returned here. And I warn you not to deny her presence. Why should I deny it? The Senegalese guard and the innkeeper pretended I had imagined her. I thought they acted on your orders. They were but exercising caution. You see, Tarzan, we have not as yet been united by the vows of marriage. Nor can we be until we have reached my land. Here, the government frowns on a man having more than one wife. And this girl is returning to your land voluntarily? Before you take your departure, you may hear with your own ears the girl's admission that she goes with me voluntarily. Turn just a little this way, my dear, and I shall cut the last of the thongs that hold your tiny feet. Ah, yes, the gag. I shall remove it immediately. I am afraid Muki misunderstood my orders. I did not wish you bound again. I have given up hope of taming you, Rene. There you are, my insolent beauty. What trick are you planning now? I am through with tricks. This afternoon you ran away and were almost killed. I shall not continue to press my suit. If you would rather face a jungle lion than me, you must detest me greatly indeed. It is not that I detest you. At least I did not at first, but I came to Africa to meet the man I love. And I have no intention of becoming a member of your harem. I have abandoned all hope of taking you home with me. What do you mean? A jungle potentate said he'd seen you in the jungle this afternoon when you ran away. You're the creature who killed the lion with a knife and, and then let out a scream like that of an insane man? The same. He desires you as one of his wives, and I have decided to let him take you. Oh, no. Perhaps you may enjoy the life in the jungle more than you would the life among my people. There you will be dressed in crude skins. You will live in a filthy hut. Beasts will be on your very doorstep. Your companions will be the foul-smelling savages with rings through their noses. And if you do anything that displeases them, you will be torn limb from limb and devoured by these followers of Tarzan. Oh, no. No, please, Ezra. Take me back to Algiers. The one I love was to meet me there. He will be worried sick by I now. I had decided to return you to Algiers. But now that this jungle lord has taken a fancy to you, I may find it difficult. I will not go with him. You've got to save me from him, Ezra. He demands to see you before he leaves. But perhaps we can resist his demands. <laughs> Hazara, why is your slave dragging the girl in? She is shy, except before me. Bring her over here, Moki. Yes, master. Musicians, cease your playing. We have an important jungle potentate who would put questions to this fair young damsel. Why do you shrink from me, girl? I saw how you acted this afternoon. Are you killed with your bare hands? Am I to admire such a savage? But I killed only so that you would not be injured. You are like the rest. You protected me only so that you could let... I protected you because your life was in danger. And that wild scream, what did that mean? It was the victory cry of the bull ape. I learned it from... The bull ape? Oh, save me from him, Ezra. You do not require saving from me. I came here only because I thought the sheik held you against your will. I heard you say something about standing no chance to escape. You... You misunderstood me. I, I said no such thing. Well, 
I, I was sure I heard you say those words. I, I intended wresting you from Sheikah Zara and, and taking you away to wherever you, you wanted You will not to... take me. I will not go with you. You are a jungle savage, and I would rather be dead than that you... That is enough, Rene. Are you convinced, jungle lord? Yes. I apologize, Zara. I shall be on my way now. Thank you for your hospitality. Not at all. We shall sojourn here for a few days before we ride on to the desert. Feel free to visit me at any time. I shall not come back this way. I'm returning to the heart of my jungle. Goodbye. I shall show you to the door, Tarzan. Thank you, innkeeper. I'm sorry I insisted on entering your inn, but I was under the... Musicians, resume the music of my land. Muki. Yes, master. Fetch my hookah. I desire the sweet incense of my pipe after this trying ordeal. I would have peace and rest before our journey of the morrow. You are taking me back to Algiers so that I can meet him? Algiers. <laughs> I should journey all the way back to Algiers so that I may give you to another? No, my dear Rene. I am taking you to the desert so that you can become my bride. But you said that I... I said just enough so that you will respond to Tarzan as I had hoped. You will continue to speak and act as I desire. And if my words do not convince you, be reminded of my other methods by the sound of my whip. It was cold and penetrating that night as Tarzan made his way deep into the jungle. But the morning was hot again, and the unseasonable dryness had scorched the earth and destroyed the plants and the small game. Even the carrion birds were hungry, and as Tarzan made his way through the upper level, he could see a flock of them circling vainly over the jungle wilds. Then, suddenly, the ugly vultures who ordinarily fed on decayed flesh plunged downward. They had sighted a prey, and a scent of man, not yet dead, assailed Tarzan's nostrils. He streaked through the treetops, and a moment later he could see the hideous giant-like birds clawing and pecking at an exhausted white man. Tarzan leaped down, and his knife described great arcs as he stabbed furiously at the monstrous scavengers of the jungle. No use. It's no use anyway. What's no use? Trying to make way through the jungle. I'll never find her anyway. You're searching for someone? I was searching. Not anymore. I'm finished. I'll never find Renee. Renee? I've seen a girl by that name. Of course, there are many French girls whose names are oh, Renee. No, but you I... don't. I've been taken in too many times as it is. Last one who claimed he'd seen her brought me into the jungle. He... He took the fee I'd promised him, and then he deserted me. I see. And the woman back at the hotel in Algiers, all she was interested in was money, too. Well, I don't know what your angle is, but you can beat it. If I'm going to die in this thinking jungle, I'll die. I've been taken for the last time. Well, perhaps the vultures who escaped my knife shall not be cheated out of their meal after all. <laughs> In just a moment, the exciting conclusion of African Thanksgiving. <coughs> well, at least the rain has come, Bill. You won't have to die in the blistering heat. Back home at this time of year, everything's golden, red, and brown. Kids are cutting out jack-o'-lanterns and... Women are roasting turkeys, baking pumpkin pies. There's a holiday we call Thanksgiving, Tarzan. I was going to take Renee back to America for Thanksgiving. <coughs> Perhaps you might like to talk about Renee <coughs> before you die. Yeah, I, I met her in Paris. I was an exchange student there, engineering. We fell in love and I wanted to marry her, but I didn't have enough money to satisfy her parents. Oh, no, the way they figured it, she was going to marry a millionaire. Some oriental potentate had seen her at the store where she worked and offered them a fortune for her. And they sold their own daughter? No, no, they, they didn't do that, but it convinced them more than ever that Renee would make a brilliant match. <coughs> and maybe they should have sold her to that Sheik Hazara. She'd have been better off. Sheik Hazara. When I graduated, I went back home. And six months ago, I had a chance to come to Africa on a job. <coughs> And I'd be a little closer to Renee, so I took it. 
We corresponded regularly, and she wrote she was running away from home, that she'd meet me in Algiers. What happened? My job was almost finished, but I couldn't leave until all the loose ends were tied up. I was a couple of days late in reaching Algiers, but the woman who ran the little hotel there where Renee was to go had promised to take care of her. And she didn't? I finally got the truth out of her, or part of it anyway. She'd made up some far-fetched story about having received a message from me, and she convinced Renee that I wanted her to meet me in the interior. Well, why did you do that? Someone had paid her to do it. I couldn't force her to tell me who it was, but she admitted Renee had hired some Arab guides to lead her to me in the jungle. It's the last that was ever seen of her. I've been searching for her ever since. Bill, ever since we've met, you've doubted my intentions, even though I saved your life. <coughs> I also saved Renee's life, and she treated me as though I were a leper. But regardless of whether you want my help or not, you're going to get it. If it's within my power, the two of you will have a reason for Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's the inn just ahead. Yeah. It's obviously deserted. Said there was a huge caravan stopping there. Sheikh Azara said they would remain here for several days. But they could have changed their plan, I suppose. Ah, the whole story's fantastic. A remote inn transformed into a potentate's palace. I didn't say exactly that. I said that the interior had been decorated with rich fabrics and costly ornaments. It must have taken weeks of preparation to make the place ready for the coming of this desert ruler. Innkeeper! Innkeeper! Ah, there's no one here. There is someone here. I can catch the scent of man. <coughs> yes? It is Tarzan, Innkeeper. Tarzan? I know no one by that name. You... But I was here last night. You must have mistaken my poor inn for another. No one has been here for years, and I have never before laid eyes on you. So you were leading me on with a story that was nothing but lies. Come inside with me, Bill. Get out of the way, Innkeeper. What? Huh. Rich fabrics and costly ornaments. Places dusty and unkept. Innkeeper, what happened to the trappings that hung here last night? Trappings? I believe you have lost your reason, jungle man. Where is Sheikh Hassanin Hezara and his followers? And, and where is the French girl? You speak in the most amazing riddles. I know of no Sheikh or of any French girl. Certainly you must have confused my inn. I apologize, Tarzan. She was here. What? Yes, innkeeper. You may have sprinkled dust around and you may have erased all the other signs of your recent visitors, but I found this in the corner over there. A shoe? One of Renee's shoes. Our friend here must have overlooked it. I know it's hers. It's of French make and it's her size. She has tiny feet. Not another girl in a thousand could get this shoe on. Now deny my story, innkeeper. I... I only lied in order to save the young man greater sorrow. What do you mean? Just after you left, Tarzan, the girl grasped a flagon of poison and drank deep. No. She was buried early this morning in the graveyard at the edge of the city. <coughs> oh, that cough's getting worse, Bill. You should have found shelter. Not until I visited her grave. A damp graveyard is certainly a poor place for a man with a cough. It's certainly a desolate place at night. It's all my fault. If she'd never left France, she wouldn't be lying in this miserable cemetery. If I'd written to her to wait until... Shh, shh. There's someone over there. You! Yes, Effendi? Why are you digging in the rain and at night? When someone dies at this time of the year, the sepulcher must be completed before the rains come too heavy. I was packing the earth firmly about this grave that was filled but this morning. Renee's grave. I know not the occupant of this final resting place, save that she was a young French girl who traveled in an Arab's caravan. The caravan has left. But not before you were well paid to heap heavy rocks on the grave and pour cement between the cracks. He told you he was just trying to make sure the rains wouldn't... Uh, uh, hold on to him, Bill. Uh, he may regain consciousness soon. I didn't hit him hard. Why did you hit him at all? Because he isn't a grave digger any more than you are. He's one of Hazara's men, and he was attempting to make sure no one would ever open that grave. What are you doing? I'm, I'm digging up the coffin. And I'm reasonably certain we'll find it empty. <laughs> Oh, Renee may be alive. 
But I think we've lost their trail now. No, Bill, we haven't. The signs are even clearer now that we're beyond the rain belt. I haven't seen any signs, even the ones you tried to point out to me. Well, they covered their trail fairly well. Hazara hoped that the story of Rene's death would discourage us, but he wasn't depending on it completely. Are you sure you don't want me to hunt for some small game, Bill? Oh, I couldn't eat. How, how do you feel? Better than I thought I would, after sleeping in that wet treetop. Frankly, I'm sick of Africa. If only I could find Rene, I'd take her to America so fast she wouldn't even have time to catch her breath. I don't think we'd ever leave the good old USA again. But first to find her. Yeah. It looks so hopeless. How can we hope to catch them when they're on horseback? Well, they too are traveling by foot now. Their horses were lame by the time they reached the last pass. You could tell by the uneven depth of the hoof marks. You could tell? I couldn't tell a thing. All I know is that if I ever come face to face with Hazara... You will be face to face with him, and soon. And, Bill, you must not show your hatred. You must act as I advised. You must pray that Renee is smart enough to catch on. If she makes one sign of recognition, it will mean the end for both of you. Looks like quite a celebration. Well, these native cities are always holding pageants and parades and dances. They're meant to please their gods. I only hope their chief will agree to our part in the ceremony. I guess you know what you're doing. But I'd like to go right to Hazara's camp and just... Oh, do you know why Hazara made camp on the edge of the city? No. Because his horses can no longer carry their burden. If he's to reach his own land, he must have camels. And the natives won't be willing to sell them for any price until their celebration is over. Yeah, but in the meantime... In the meantime, I'm going to have a talk with their chief, and you're going to dye your skin black and dress as a native witch doctor. Then you're going to make a call on Sheik Hazara. Rene, I must speak to some local witch doctor who has just arrived. You had best retire into the quarters of the women. All right, I will go. Only I do not see what... Greetings, Sheik of Great Desert. My humble greetings to you. Rene, I told you to go. No, woman is to stay. You in my city, so I give orders. As you say, witch doctor. Why have you come? Today is great celebration in our village. Yes, I know that. Your chief told me that, that I would... we not sell you camels until parade through city over. Yes, that was his decision. But now, new decision made. Since you and your camp are within limits of city, one your party must join in parade to gods. I shall be most happy this to... This woman, she is great beauty. She please our gods... She ride camel at my side. I have spoken. Rene, it is best to humor these native leaders. You'll have to do what he says. All right, Edgar. I am ready to come with you, witch doctor. Good. Camels tethered before entrance of bait. Come with me. Goodbye, Sheik Hazara. <laughs> All right, Bill, Rene. We're far enough from the sheik and his men now. Ho! Oh, oh, ho there, ho! Oh. Hey, I'm almost able to manage a camel now. Oh, you were wonderful, witch doctor, Bill. <laughs> it was a fine performance. <laughs> but it's time to remove your makeup now. We're, we'll leave these camels here and take to the jungle. I guarantee that the sheik will not be able to follow our trail. It'll be three or four days until the natives sell him camels, and by that time... You'll be on your way to America. America? <laughs> Gee, I wonder what my friends back home would have said if they could have seen me dressed like that native witch doctor and riding at the head of that fantastic parade. Oh, the parade was part of a week's feasting to honor the gods of the fields. Grain is thrown upon the ground in the belief that some of the earth's yield must be returned to it or otherwise it will become barren. The celebration is held at each harvest time. Oh, sort of a Thanksgiving ritual, huh? Thanksgiving? Hey, it's Thanksgiving today. What is this Thanksgiving? Uh, that's a holiday you'll find out about in America, Renee. We'll be too late for the turkey and the pumpkin pie this year. We still have a lot to be thankful for. And number one on the list is having met Tarzan. In 
In just a moment, we'll return with a preview of our next story of Tarzan. During the past ten years, the price of museum specimens has doubled and trebled. Today, an African elephant is worth $6,000, a giraffe brings $4,000, a hippopotamus $5,000, and a white rhinoceros $15,000. Tarzan attempts to halt the plundering of the jungle by an unscrupulous murderer, and he encounters Hunter's Fury, which is the title of our next story. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore.